Good morning, wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are. On the face of this very planet, we gladly welcome you to our unusual early morning broadcast on this very day, the third day of March, in the year of our Elohim 2020, with the time now standing at precisely five minutes past 6 a.m. in the blessed holy land of Biafra, I welcome each and every one of you and as I do so, I will encourage you to also wake up those around you as you're getting the children ready for school, as you're preparing to go to your workplaces, as you're preparing to go to your businesses, as some people all over the world are waiting breathlessly for the decision of the laughable Supreme Court of the damnable zoological republic, we are here to remind humanity. We are here to preach this very gospel. We are here to maintain our formidability, our resoluteness, our determination to ensure the restoration of Biafra in our time. We are not going to be derailed. We are not going to be distracted. We are not going to be confused we must remain disciplined we must remain focused we must remain dedicated we must remain diplomatically engaged we must at all times place Elohim the most high Chukwokika Biyama in front by the sides and at the back of whatever we are doing because without the grace of God Almighty in heaven we wouldn't be here today and IPOB would not be what it is. Therefore, this very gospel, as unusual as it may sound, must be preached this very morning, that heaven and earth may testify that in their time, in their age, in their period, they preached. And heaven listened, and Biafra came. That is why we maintain ever so formidably at all times that the world would not have seen anything like this because this very Biafra that we so ceaselessly seek is the very last miracle on this earth. Many are opposed to Biafra, both in the physical and in the spirit. Many have come, they have tried from Britain to go on to the alliance of the children of darkness they did not prevail and they can never prevail because we represent the light we are the children of truth we are the children of heaven itself that was why our ancestors when you ask them where they came from they said they descended from heaven itself and we have come to lend credence to that very assertion Therefore, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Although it is early in the morning in the blessed land of Biafra, for some people it is their afternoon, for some it is their evening, and for some it is their night. Regardless of where you are living, where you are domiciled on the face of this very planet, this is the one radio station we can assure you is listened to along the length and breadth every longitudinal dissection every latitudinal line people are listening to radio biafra at this very moment making it arguably the most listened to radio station on the face of this very earth not minding what our enemies are doing what our detractors are doing we are resolute we are determined, we are unstoppable because we do not retreat and we do not surrender. We are IPOB. We march through everything. Every tribulation, every trial, every obstacle, we crush and we continue marching. That is who we are. And the coming of Biafra will be a crowning glory of that very ethos we must pray before we go in this very morning to remind humanity to remind the world 
to remind those idiots with their horse wig who will be sitting in Supreme Court today that the world is aware of what is happening. This is the age of IPOB. Everywhere in the world, people are aware of what is happening in the damnable zoological republic. That British colonial experiment, that very useless contraption that has no meaning, that people answer to and pledge allegiance to, out of ignorance, stupidity, and hopelessness. We have come that we may bring light where once there was darkness. We have come that the world may know the truth about Nigeria. We have come that Biafra may be restored. And for that reason and that very reason alone, we give glory to Elohim in heaven. The one and only indivisible God in heaven, the creator of time itself and space. Everything that was created was made by the speech and the words that came out of the mouth of God Almighty in heaven. Therefore, we submit to his will, and not to the will of flesh nor man, but to the will of God, that everybody throughout time prayed to. I said everybody prayed. That was why in our last broadcast, I said the prayer of Yahweh Yeshua. He said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name in recognition of the supremacy of God Almighty. There is no other God apart from one indivisible God in heaven. The same God of Israel, the same God of Eri, the same God of the ancients in the land, the same God who determines morning, afternoon, and night, the same God that provides for his children, the same way that he provides for the birds of the air that has no work. The same God that said we must come out of detention, come out of prison, the same God that said that every mortal flesh must be, must be committed to earth. That is the God we worship, the same God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the same God of Samuel, the same God of David, that same God of Jeremiah, the same God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that same God that changeth not, the same God that remains the same in the ancients as it is today, the same God of Ari, that came to I came to Guleri that said that here I will build my people from the darkest continent on this earth that light may come where once there was no light. The same people that never change, the same God that we worship that never change. The white man came to confuse us and partially they succeeded. But we have rediscovered who are our roots, and that is where we are going. That is why IPOB is successful and will continue to remain so. In the name of Elohim, we fight. In the name of Shukukika Biyama, we fight. In the name of God in heaven Almighty, we fight, and this generation shall win. Let us pray. I will pray in the language of heaven. Some people do not understand it, but the angels in heaven are bowing before the throne of Elohim. Also, my father and my mother, they bow and they say, you are holy. They say to God, you are holy forever and ever. You are holy. Without it, we can never succeed. Without it, we cannot be where we are today. The only reason why we are where we are today is because of Jukukika Biyama Puruminyanina. There is no other name. I said no other name under the sun. Only that that belongs to God in heaven. And as I promised once I was in detention, in the assembly of men all over the whole world, I will proclaim your goodness. That was the prayer I prayed inside detention. That God Almighty, should this be made possible and I walk away from here with this life intact, I promise you in the assembly of men all over the world, I will proclaim your name and your goodness that you are the God of yesterday, today and forevermore. Nothing compares to thee. Nothing called. That is why we do not equate the glory and the majesty of God in heaven to anything that is on this very earth. Absolutely nothing. Today, I will say a prayer of the very first verse of the testament that Elohim gave to Moshe on Mount Sinai, 
And he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage in the land of Israel. You will have no other God before me. You will not make anything of any image of that which is in heaven, on earth, and in the water underneath it. You will not bow down before any idol. You will not bow down before any idol that is the word of God in heaven. For I am a jealous God that will bring iniquity upon iniquity on those that defile my name and my command unto those that do as I have spoken. I will bless abundantly for Van that very people is IPOB, that very generation is Biafra. We proclaim the word of God in heaven. Not the word of man, but the word of God in heaven. The God of the ancients, the gods of our fathers and of our ancestors. That is why we are successful. That is why we will continue to be successful. The very ancient that God looked after and protected in the land of Biafra. So shall we return to our old ways that God in heaven may have all the glory, all the adoration, all the adoration, all the praise and all the honor that Biafra make on our time and our testimony will be very simple that we did not do anything. All that you see around us, all that we seemingly accomplished was by the grace of Chukuki Gabiama, the heaven, and not of man, not of flesh. We have not done anything. All that we see around us is because of the mercy and grace of God in heaven, not of man. We have not accomplished anything. We are men who once one day shall die and be committed to it. eternal glory and adoration belong to only one true God and God in heaven, indivisible over time. The God we say is the ancient of days, the ancients of the ancients, the beginning of everything that human beings are conscious of. We must proceed this very morning resolutely and irrepressibly to preach the gospel of truth, the gospel of redemption, the gospel of hope, this same gospel that will liberate and free the land of Biafra, a gospel that will restore that which they have destroyed, a gospel of immense and immeasurable proportion. On this very day, the Supreme Court of the Zoological Republic of Nigeria will sit in contemplation and determination of the faith of not just the state, not just the East, 
but the chosen land of Biafra itself, because they have conspired as usual, they have found a willing tool in hopes of them. They have found conspirators and traitors, deceivers and saboteurs in our midst, who are willing for a pot of porridge to sell our land to the vandals from the Sahel. They are willing to sell anything, including their own children, in order to make sure that they advance their vain glorious existence, in order to endear themselves to their caliphate masters, in order that they may rule over the children of the Most High, the children of light. But today we shall prove to them and the rest of humanity that this very IPOB, this very movement, this very time in this very age will not submit, will not succumb, will not be defeated by treachery. The likes of Hopu Zodema cannot prevail in our land. The likes of those who are in Ohanese selling our people for very many decades now, they will never prevail. They can never ever prevail. I can assure you that categorically 100%. It can never ever happen. Hopu Zodema cannot be there unless the people of Imo State vote for him. They did not vote for him and he cannot be there. So all the convoluted mathematics that makes no sense, all the arithmetic of the Janjaweed in the Supreme Court, all those who are hoping in perpetuating or hoping to benefit from the perpetuation of injustice will all be disappointed. It is not possible. Common sense, do not support it. Equity, do not support it. Justice, do not support it. And law cannot uphold that which is unjust. They say that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. The downtrodden, everybody, those who govern, those who rule, those that command armies in any democracy around the world is supposed to have what I refer to as one common judicial purpose, which is the submission to the rule of law not the rule of cabal, not the rule of Fulani cabal, murderers and criminals, terrorists everywhere in the North. No, but to the rule of law. What the world is watching today is to see if that common man that has been downtrodden for very many decades can at least for once have a semblance of representation. If those who are going to don their horse wig today can do the needful and do that which is right before God in heaven and man on earth. And what is that thing? They must know that people are very, very angry. Their friends are very, very angry. We've been waiting very patiently. As our partners have told us, to allow this very decision to be reached by the Supreme Court. Not because we have any interest in politics, as you all know, we don't. Our interest is to ensure that justice is done at all times, regardless of who is affected. It doesn't matter. Whilst I was in detention and subsequently in prison, I fought for the release of Hausa kids who we are wrongfully accused of belonging to Boko Haram. I fought for those they claim belonged to Ombatse, if some of you know that very um, um, cult group from Nasarawa State. I fought diligently. We paid for their parents to leave their villages to come to Abuja to make sure, some of them didn't even know that their children were locked up in DSS dungeon in Abuja, and some abandoned in Kujia prison. We fought for them to be set free. Therefore, we fight injustice wherever we see it. It doesn't matter who it affects. What we are trying to do is to build what I call a knowledge bank for Biafrans for reference purposes in the future. That every Biafran, male, female, 
and child must understand that wherever they see injustice, they confront it. I said wherever they see it, they must confront it. Because injustice is evil and God in heaven will not allow us to be successful when we see those who are less privileged and we allow them to go on to continue to suffer as Biafrans will do, as those they call emo citizens will do because I do not believe in the artificial, artificially created states. The general perception of the judiciary in Nigeria is very, very bad. This is their one opportunity to try to remedy what is left of their existence. The situation in Nigeria is an indication of how terrible that place is as a country. Very, very terrible. And our people, I'm getting some complaints. You know, Facebook is being run by some Yoruba people in Lagos and in Abuja. They do not want the world to hear this very gospel. They will do all they can to disengage. They will do all they can to frustrate. They will do all within their powers to make sure that this very gospel is not heard all over the world, but it is being listened to all over the world. We can assure them. We are on multiple platforms. The sooner they realize this, the better for them. Nobody can stop us. After this very broadcast, it will be, it will be repeated over and over and over on Radio Biafra. All the platforms on Radio Biafra will have it. So they're wasting their time. They should better stop removing people who are listening to us on Facebook, on my page and also that of Radio Biafra. We are going to ask ourselves a very simple question this very morning. A very simple question this morning. Should people who in the first place, I want our people to note this down carefully one after the other to understand how evil, how duplicitous, to understand how compromised how heartless, how injudicious the Supreme Court of Nigeria is in relation to the Imo State gubernatorial debacle. The world must know this. What we are asking, in fact, my assertion is that hope Uzodema should not even be in contention. APC should not even be in contention. Talk less of contesting. Talk less of going to Supreme Court bribing the judges you have the Supreme Court and Tanko Aeroplane Turner, Tanko Muhammad, an illiterate, stark illiterate Sharia uh, uh, judge to become the Chief Justice of a common law practicing federation. A shame and a stain on everything that calls him or herself a Nigerian. A very big shame. Should APC have even fielded a candidate in Imo State? The answer is no. Do you want to know why? Because APC fielded two candidates during the election, Uche Wosu and Hope Uzodema. I am not telling you what was made up. I'm telling you the decision of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. The same Supreme Court, this same now, not they were claiming in Bayosa um, 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 verdict that we cannot reverse ourselves. This is Supreme Court. Our decision is final. But by listening and entertaining the petition of Hope Uzodema, the Supreme Court of Nigeria sat on a decision and ruling of its own court. The same Supreme Court is now sitting on appeal on a decision reached by the same Supreme Court. How was that possible? Or how is that possible? For those who do not know, the governorship candidate of Action Alliance in Imo State in the 2019 election is a young boy called Uche Mwosu, who was married to the daughter of the Sonnet himself, the caliphate, the prime caliphate servant, Rucha Sokorocha. Uche Mwosu went to court, or in fact, AA dragged him to court, which is Action Alliance. And in court, 
the Supreme Court quashed the candidature of Uche Nwosu as representing the Action Alliance. Do you know the reason the Supreme Court gave? Because Uche Nwosu is the nominated candidate of APC. Understand this very, very clearly. Uche Nwosu, by affirmation of the Supreme, the same Supreme Court of Nigeria, they recognized him as the authentic candidate of APC. I will go to the nitty, you know, bit of um, uh, the 388 and 366 and all that rubbish. We'll get to that in a short while. But I want the world to understand the way the Nigerian judiciary functions. I want the world to understand that when I insult our people, we black Africans, I have a very good reason for that. The world must understand that those who run Nigeria do not have conscience, they are not human beings. These are wild beasts in the forest. I want to prove to the whole world, I forget all their grammar, they spend months writing and, and plagiarizing of the internet, that they have nothing upstairs. Let me reaffirm, let me restate what I've just said. Supreme Court of Nigeria, Supreme Court of Nigeria, which these judges know, affirmed that Uche Wosu Supreme Court is the authentic candidate for APC. Then where did those Odema, who those Odema come from? Now, Oshomole and those in APC imposed Hopo Zodema contrary to Supreme Court ruling. I want, it, I want to repeat. The imposition of Hopo Zodema as the APC candidate was in complete disregard for Supreme Court judgment. These are the people running a country. APC. They know that AA, which is Action Alliance, took which wants to court. And the matter was heard at the Supreme Court and the determination was made that you, Uche Mosu, you cannot be the candidate for two parties because the law is against it. You are the authentic candidate of APC. Uche Mosu came, I don't know why I mentioned that little boy this morning. Uche Mosu came back and expressed his disappointment that the ruling APC had replaced his name as the authentic candidate of the party during the election. Whilst this matter was pending at the Supreme Court, this is the Supreme Court of Nigeria, where the ruling party has no regard for their judgment, only when it goes their way. The only time they respect the rule of law is when it goes their way, the way they have planned it, the way they have laid it out. Or else, if they give you bail, they will hold you. If they release you, they will hold you. Anything they want, they do. That is how lawless Nigeria is. That is why they, are keep, they keep breeding bandits every blessed day. Because those that are saying, oh, put down your arms, stop kidnapping, stop killing, stop sacking villages, they know that even the APC government itself do not obey the law. Nigeria is one lawless jungle. One lawless zoo is even better. This is what we are bringing to the attention of the world this very morning, especially from Biafra land, that Nigeria is unsalvageably evil. There is nothing anybody can do to redeem Nigeria. It is impossible. Because from top to bottom, is steeped in injustice, corruption, and evil. All of them, by none. A whole Supreme Court has no regard because they didn't bribe him or her. Oh, it is just their Supreme Court now. You gave them money to, to enter a verdict that suits you. This is my Supreme Court now. You come and bribe us as well. That's exactly what they're doing. The most corrupt set of people you have on the face of the earth, Nigerian judiciary. Very, very corrupt, hopeless, and without conscience. Supreme Court of Nigeria affirmed that Uche Mwusu is the authentic candidate of APC. But APC disregarded the court pronouncement. I'm sure today or tomorrow, they'll sit down and say, oh, we have considered it, uh, given section 400 of section 6 of the constitution and given uh, 9,000 of electoral act and considering the president of Akredolu versus whoever, we, we, we think hope, rubbish. That is why when I address people on radio,
Nigeria, I use common English language that everybody can understand. Because when they rap, they are they are evil and they are and and they are, and their duplicitousness in those flowery words, those English archaic jargon. Ordinary people become confused. They do not interrogate. They do not question. They do not investigate. But here on Radio Biafra, we do all of that. We interrogate. We investigate. We probe, and we discover answers that people never knew existed. Some of you never knew this morning that. Hope Ozodema should not be contesting the Imo State um, 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 governorship elections. Some of you don't know this. The Supreme Court stated that you, Uche Wosu, you are the authentic APC candidate. Therefore, you cannot contest under AA. Do you know what happened? Everybody ignored that ruling. Both INEC, both APC, both the, the uh, Rochas Abo Awosa, his, his camp. Everybody ignored the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Which also ran under AA. Who puts on a that shouldn't be running around under APC? <clears throat> Very sad indeed, isn't it? That is Nigeria for you. A country where people do not obey the law. You will see Oshomole as ugly as diminutive as he is. He will try to say, oh, We obey the law. We are law abiding citizens in Nigeria. And we obey the law. Supreme Court of Nigeria affirmed. That APC nominated Uche Wosu. APC went behind every. In fact, with, with total um, disregard for the rule of law, imposed hope was on them. Is it becoming very clear now? Now, that very judgment, of course, you cannot vacate Supreme Court judgment, that very judgment affirming the fact that Uche Wosu is the authentic APC candidate has not been set aside by anybody. But in the same court of law, you see them, they will gather. You know, they know that black people, we don't like reading. We don't read that much, especially a K, a primitive English. They will write one rubbish. They will write it. Not, it's not them writing. They basically search online and law libraries all over the world. They lift what has been written by other judges. They edit it and they churn it out. And they know you cannot read it. They know you cannot. That is how they confuse all of you. They say, oh, he, he, they're, they're talking grammar. Their grammar is sweet. He knows how to write English. That is where they confuse all of you. <laughs> because you are taken by the very, very colorful presentation of English language. And you forget the substance of the matter. You only ask one cha. And in that process, you have lost your capacity to reason, to question, and to interrogate. But here we do that. That is why we state unequivocally this morning that the only I am giving the Supreme Court of Nigeria the only viable, respectable option out of the mess that they have put themselves into. The hole they dug for themselves. There is only one clean way out. Say that because of all the multitude of all the myriad of problems associated with the state, we are calling for fresh elections because the 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 sustenance of Hope Uzodema's imposition in Imo State cannot be supported by any fact in law. Impossible. Because the decision of the court in December, I think it was December 19th, was it 20th, 2019, affirming in very clear, unambiguous terms, that which is the authentic APC candidate nullifies hope of them. Where law is practiced, that should be the only natural outcome. But watch and see their statement, how they will seek to justify that hope of them should be there. They will write one rubbish. I will read. I will read, and now let me not read what he, what, what the, the little, um, uh, the young man said. But I think that is very, very clear. And why did the Supreme Court sack Yehidio and replace him with Hopu Zodema? Is to serve a very simple caliphate agenda. That was why Hopu Zodema, in his own words, said, I will extend electricity to you. I will give you water. And now I'm asking hope, also, the, our people in the north, those who live in Sabongeri that developed the north, uh, that wanted the north to develop it, 
the, the, the governors of the states where they are residing extend the water and lights to them or give them land for their Ruga settlement. He said it openly. It is not hidden. He came out openly to say it. I will give you land. I will give you anything you want. Anything you're looking for, I am going to give you. This is a governor in Imo State saying that he will give al Majri anything they want. Is it hidden? Are people saying that that is not what is happening? Despite the experience of other people that have the Janja with Fulani in their midst, despite all the experience, this is the reason why they brought Hopu Zadimma to give our land to the Fulani, to extend electricity to them and water in their settlements when the same approach is not being offered to our people or adopted by northern governors in relation to communities where Biafrans are doing businesses in the north. That tells you what he has come to do. They nullified Emeki Jodia and declared Hopo Zadema as the winner. They said it was a unanimous agreement. Uh, we are, they sat together and decided that um, uh, the the results from the 388 polling stations were unlawfully excluded in the collation of the final governorship result. Now, this is the question that the judges at the Supreme Court must consider. Did you count the votes from these 388 polling units? They did not. How do we know how how many people from these 388 polling units voted for Kupu Zodemma? They don't know how many people from this your fictitious 388 polling units voted for any other candidates they do not know they have no idea they do not know the supreme court of nigeria do not know how many people voted for each and every candidate they do not know they just said 388 polling units we are unlawfully excluded because of that we are going to give it to hope Zodemma. have you heard of such rubbish before only in the zoo called nigeria and some idiots with their very flaky knowledge of the law will come and say oh the supreme court is right how can you be right and allocate all the votes to one person you don't even know who voted for who this same woman went on to say that just in her summary decision or judgment that the results from the 388 polling units will now be added to Mr. Ozodemma. And as a result, he polled the majority of lawful votes and ought to have been declared winner by INEC. Unbelievable. Vote, let me quote verbatim what I said. Vote due to the appellant Senator Hope Sodema and the APC from 388 polling units were wrongfully excluded from scores ascribed to the appellant who is Hope Sodema. It is therefore ordered that the appellant votes from 388 polling units unlawfully excluded from the appellant vote declared shall be added. And that the first respondent to making it was not duly elected by a majority of lawful votes cast at the said election. Can you believe such rubbish? Can anybody in their right mind believe such nonsense? 388 polling units. So the, the, the Supreme Court of Nigeria is telling us that every voter that cast their ballot in this mysterious 388 units voted for APC only. If that is the case, how come no APC House of Assembly member was returned in all these areas? A very simple question that we think sensible, reasonable people ought to be asking. If that is the case, if all the 388 polling units voted for APC, how come there is no APC House of Assembly member from any of those places? But uh, it's very, very unfortunate. They cannot reason very well. But we must continue to expose them. This is one thing our people need to understand very, very clearly. The police, they called their own witness. They called a witness. They called a police officer. You must understand this very, very carefully. 
what is happening in Nigeria. The world must be aware of what is happening in Nigeria. I think um, uh, Facebook is busy removing people who are listening to Radio Biafra this morning. <laughs> very, very sad indeed. But we must continue. Of course, we will continue. We will continue. On Tuesday, January 14, 2020, the Supreme Court of Nigeria, in one of their most controversial judgments in history, removed the Meki Hediora and declared Hopu Zodema the governor of, or should I say the winner of the election, and by imposition, the governor of, um, of Imo State. <laughs> now, listen carefully. Senator Hopu Zodema was the one that petitioned, not Heineck. Zodema was the one that wrote to, to, the, to the court saying that uh, I have votes from 388 polling units, but these results were wrongfully excluded by INEC in the accumulation of results. Listen very carefully, please. Hope Uzodema brought 54 witnesses, and 28 of them were polling agents. There was no word, nobody from the world, no word coalition agent of INEC testified. Senator Zodema himself testified as prosecution witness number 11. His state coalition, uh, uh, his own APC agent testified as witness number 51. And there was a certain policeman, listen very carefully, the only slightly, she will say, independent person in the whole saga, testified as witness number 54. Now listen, the results relied on by Hopu Zodema and the Supreme Court, Supreme Court of Nigeria was contained in the bags presented by this policeman. He's a deputy police commissioner. He had a bag with him, which he described, listen carefully, as the result from 366 polling units. Listen very carefully. The police came and the police testified. The police said, this is from 366 polling units. Bag was not opened. Nobody counted the, the, the ballot papers or even sought to scrutinize the result sheets. No, it wasn't opened. It was in a sealed bag, in a Supreme Court, in a sealed bag, where justice must be seen to be done at all times. The bag was sealed. It wasn't opened. What I'm telling you are facts recorded in court proceedings in the Supreme Court of Nigeria. A deputy commissioner in Imo State, he was the police witness, or should I say public witness number 54. He testified. They asked him, what have you got for us? He said, my lord, or should I say unlearned lord, or Sharia lord, I have here with me 366 polling units. The result, nobody opened it to see how many votes uh, were allocated to Hope Ozodema, how many votes Ihejo had got, how many votes Uchemosu got. No, it wasn't done. In a, super, in a court of law, seeking to bring equity and justice to a case before it. They never checked anything. Unbelievable. Do you now know what, what, what they did? They said, okay, that is true. But in their minds, 366 polling units, according to the results, that was what they did open it because they were lying to themselves. Oshomole APC and uh, 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 Abakiyari, they were lying. They want Imoset at all costs. If not, they would have opened that very bag. In a court of law, Supreme Court, they could not open to say, show us what is in the bag. They didn't do it. And remember, I said 366 polling units. 366. The police came and said, we have results of 366 polling, 366 polling units, but the bag wasn't even opened. He did not open the bag. He did not refer to any of the results. And during cross-examination in a Supreme Court of Nigeria, they asked the policeman, the Olokwa that brought the, the, the bag of, um, of results from 366 polling units. They asked him, do you know what the bag you're carrying contains? He said, no. Do you know the number of people that cast their vote? No. Can you open the bag? No. How did the Supreme Court of Nigeria then know what is in the bag? How did they how did they come to know the number of people that voted inside this train mind you 366 or so not 388 according to the Supreme Court? 
How many people voted? They do not know. Policeman that brought the bag, do you know how many people voted? He doesn't know. Can you tell us anything about the result? No, he doesn't. How dare, how then? He, how then did the Supreme Court of Nigeria come to the conclusion that all the votes in that bag belong to Kopu Zodema? How? The bag was not open, it was sealed. Oh, did they go count the votes at the back after the public must have gone? So that they're now conducting a, a judgment in the middle of the night or investigating evidence in the middle of the night? not before public view anymore as any decent court will do anywhere in the world i want the world to understand the hopelessness of nigeria i want the world to understand how not it's no longer corruption it's beyond corruption how i don't i don't have the word for it i can't describe it i i like the adjective to, to describe it what is happening in nigeria I'm saying this because of those that say we are we Nigerians, as, a, as our Basanjo have said, oh, Nigerians, we are praying, we are working hard. This is the Nigeria you're working hard for. In Nigeria, where truth and justice will be flipped upside down in broad daylight, in broad daylight. They, 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 they weave their lies, their web of lies. layer upon layer of grammar and falsehood english language english language they pack it on top of lies and they serve you instead of you to say that this is wrong you say, ha, 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 the grammar they can speak grammar or they are orators <laughs> you see how foolish we are can you see how daft we are the substance the lies of the supreme court is inside those documents but because of the flowery archaic language of English. All of you are bamboozled. You're all confused. But you can't confuse us. Do we look stupid to you? You cannot confuse us. We know the truth. Up beneath all these layers of grammar, of, of, of um, even no, if Elizabeth Elizabethan English, not even this Elizabeth the first. Beneath all the language of Chaucer, the language of Shakespeare. Beneath the language of Thomas Hardy, all these archaic English, lies the very simple truth that the Supreme Court of Nigeria, a bunch of liars, they are thieves, they are rogues. They have come to do injustice, not justice. Forget the grammar. Go to the, what is the substance? The policeman brought a bag. The bag contained results of 366. This is the police. The police brought 360. Now I'm asking the Supreme Court, where did you get the result of 388 polling units? From where? From where? The simple question is, from where? From who? The police came with a bag. They claim we are containing results of 366 polling units. Where did you get your 388 from? From where? I'm asking. Can somebody please make sense of this? From where did police get? Additional 367, 368, 369, 370, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 70. Oh my goodness, man. Shinneke, man. Where did they get the results from? But you say, oh, they wouldn't have the right to do it. It's the Supreme Court. Their, their decision is final. It's the Supreme Court, the FX Court. But they, these are. When I say to them that, I'm very sorry, some people don't like me for this, but I keep saying it. University education in Nigeria is, it, believe you me, you, you were born intelligent. And then you go to school in Nigeria, go to university, you come out more stupid than you were when you started. It's unbelievable. Nobody can ask, forget all the grammar. Two things stand out in this case. Is who opposed or them are the authentic candidate for APC? Yes or no? And if it is yes, what happens now to the Supreme Court judgment entered on the 19th day of December, I think, uh, or, or thereabout, 19th or 20th of December, 2019, affirming that Uche is the is the um, um, is the authentic um, um, what's it called governorship candidate? 
what happened to that Supreme Court decision. So we should set it aside. And you claim you obey law and you obey order in the zoo. I know it was. In, I need to get the authentic date. I think it's 2018, not actually 2019. I think it's about 2018 or thereabouts, before the elections were held. I think it was 2018. You see, 20 last year was 2019. You see how how I have I have been struggling to make sense of this idiocy. I'm now even confused myself about dates. That is how foolish it is. From 366. Uh, polling units, they moved to 388. So the simple question is to Supreme Court, where did you get your extra polling units from? From where? I know some people will come and say, oh, but it's, it's, a, it's a very small figure. Uh, it's uh, from 366 to 388. It's, it's not that uh, and this year, G. Black, Black. Trying to always justify evil. Even if they made a mistake by one polling unit, by one voter, one vote only, the entire process is flawed and must be nullified. That is why they have no choice than to call for fresh elections. No choice. Because all these facts here, our consultants are putting it together. Every lawmaker, every judicial body in the world will receive it. And we say to them, we told you that these are a bunch of criminals that cannot run a civil society and you are doubting us. Here is the proof and the evidence. Do you think such a person is fit to be a judge? This is the question we'll be asking every civilized country in the world with facts and figures. Let's see how they will escape it. All of them will be banned from traveling abroad. <laughs> they all know how Trump behaves. They won't travel abroad. There is no, apart from Britain, there is no civilized government anywhere in the world that will see this travesty of justice and support it. It's impossible. They only have one option. I know they may go there today and say, oh, we are filing another motion to support the motion we filed, supporting the motion that was filed. You know the same legal uh, uh, gibberish. No, I, I'm not responding to the motion. I was filed this, it was filed this morning. I'm not responding because of yesterday, it was four o'clock. Can you believe such rubbish? In a, in a Supreme Court? You come to a Supreme Court to exchange uh, 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 the position and and, uh, and what is it called and uh, uh, affidavit and go home supreme court supreme court of law child in law courts in america i think the the complainant or whoever it is uh, will have one hour you will get 30 minutes at the beginning opening um, remarks then 30 minutes closing remarks, and that's the end of it. They go, they are John, they come up with their decision. All this, your exchange of papers and all this rubbish should have been done way before now. How can you come to Supreme Court and you say, Oh my lord, I got this affidavit this morning. Oh, please, can you adjourn to in, a, in a Supreme Court? Supreme Court. Hi. And they said they started law in a Supreme Court. Supreme Court only gives the both parties to maximum two hours. 30 minutes, your opening statement. After the deliberation, you close. They ask you questions and you close. And that's the end of it. Because all the materials they need would have been filed before that time. Go and do your research. Check any Supreme Court judgment in the world. That is how it works. You don't come and stand in front of Supreme Court judges and you begin to exchange affidavit and the position that is rubbish, pure rubbish. The answer is Han, senior advocate of the zoo, senior junior advocate of the zoo, my learned friend, my learned sister, my learned cousin, my learned niece, rubbish. You don't go to a court of law, Supreme Court for that matter. You start exchanging uh, uh, love letter. These are learned people. Do you see why we cannot belong to the zoo? Do you see why we can never be a part of that British concocted rubbish? Because people do not reason very well. They cannot reason very well. In a super, I want anybody to just Google American Supreme Court judgment or whatever. Go and look at it, how, it's func how it functions. After all, we copied it from them. They will look for another excuse to, 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 to postpone it. As they are postponing, hope who Zodema is giving our land to Fulani. Ruga is coming into Imo State as they are postponing it. They postpone again. 
We need more evidence. In a Supreme Court, evidence that should have been filed three, four months ago. Evidence should have been filed. It's now they're asking for it. In a Supreme Court. Oh, dear me. They ask us, why do you want Biafra? This is the reason why we want Biafra. The stupidity in Nigeria is too much. The injustice in the zoo is intolerable. I'm telling you the truth. Policeman they brought, policeman said, I only have results for 300. So let me ask these judges presiding over this very case. So when you travel abroad and they ask you, what happened in the case? Where did you get the other uh, uh, numbers from? You made up the, the almost 18 uh, extra, um, is it 18 polling units that you use it? Uh, no, I'm not uh, actually extra uh, 18, 18, about 22 polling units. Where did you get it from? What, what will you say to them? You are a judge in this very case, Supreme Court judge. Police said, I have results of 366. Where is the rest of the result? They made it 388. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where is the rest of the result? They made it 388. From your Supreme Court to the, so the, the most learned of the learned. Where is it? I don't want people to be dancing all over the place. Just a very simple question. Very simple question. One, are you now setting aside the Supreme Court judgment that affirmed that? Which is the governor of um, is the governor candidate of APC in Imo State? Number one question. Number two, where did you get the extra polling units from to make it 388 according to your judgment records? Case is finished. Over. Case is finished. They will be looking at themselves, looking for 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 Abak Yari to give them guidance. They will now run to Yoruba Nisupas. Please, how are we going to spin this? You know people are very stupid. Please write it in such a way to confuse everybody. And you hear one person come and say, I'm a professor of law from Ibinedo University. Uh, in my opinion, they bring the idiots to channels TV. In my opinion, I think the results should stand. It's the apex court. They forget the substance. You know, that's what they do in this week. They always forget the substance. It's the apex court. It cannot be reviewed. Even if it is, it is, um, it is, uh, it is, um, human to err which means uh, a, a, an error can be human you know it's an error it is a, a clerical error that's what they're going to say that the, they are they are, they're moving from 366 to 88 is a clerical error that's what they will say clerical error and they will bring out all these corrupt primitive videos that said the red law you will see them tomorrow they'll be in channels to you on channels tv Telling you is a is a, is a human error. Is a, a, our lordships can uh, can uh, make mistake. Watch and see what's going to happen. The woman sat down to write this judgment. All of them. They decided on the figure of three hundred and eighty-eight polling units. The police came with three hundred and sixty-six uh, alleged. 300 results of 366 polling stations. And you're telling me it's the Supreme Court. Because of that singular blatant error. Because people don't know that law follows precedence. In other words, if you allow, if they claim it is an error or mistake, or if they allow this to stand, somebody else can come, deliver a judgment, and cite this very case as a precedent. Oh, it was a mistake. After all, the mistake of, um, of Tanko Muhammad's um, panel, Supreme Court panel, in the Hopus Adema versus uh, making Hedion uh, uh, case, uh, there was an obvious error and nothing happened. You don't know that law is about precedent. So you don't know that? That law, law, law is about precedent. So some of you don't know that? You don't know what law is? That is why this travesty cannot stand. That is why this illegality cannot stand. That is why they need to open that very bag. This mysterious 366 polling units, not 388, mind you, they must open the bag to see what is in the bag. That is their lies. That is the way they lie and deceive ordinary people. And people say that in Nigeria, I'm, I'm going to law school. I'm very sorry for you. Because though you may be endowed with natural brilliance, Practicing law in Nigeria is assembling a bunch of baboons and uh, trying to recite the constitution to them. They won't understand what you're saying. That's exactly what is happening in the zoo of Nigeria. Watch them. They have now lined up all the journalists that are going to bribe. Watch, I'm telling you the truth. All the papers, they will bribe them now. 
Watch all the newspapers. They say it is the Supreme Court. It cannot tamper with. They will keep saying it until they divert your attention. That was what they did in my case. The army came to my house to kill me. And in the process, killed 28 people, traumatized my parents so much that they died from the illness that came as a result of their ordeal. But you know what they did in Nigeria? They paid the Yoruba newspapers. They kept saying that Nnamdi can ran away. He ran away. He, they kept saying it. They kept saying it. They kept saying it. Until I went to the US. I saw some very powerful people. They said, but they said, you jumped bail. I said, no. Here is the video. Some of them started crying when they saw the video of the, that Sumto Okonkwo shot in my house when the invasion was, was, was taking place. That is Nigeria. That is the black man for you. That is how evil the black mind can be. And that is what they're going to do to all of you tomorrow. From tomorrow, from, from tonight, they will start. It's the Supreme Court. It's a, it's a best court. Nobody should challenge them. It's the highest. To, to, to make an error is human. I'm telling you the truth. Watch and see what will happen. <laughs> and then that will be it. <laughs> and then you continue. You start uh, waiting for the turn of your village in 2099 to become either governor or senator. It's, it's the turn of my village. I don't know what is wrong with us, honestly speaking. Listen to this. All the prosecution witnesses, including in all of them, admitted during cross-examination that the result sheets were not legible and did not contain the scores of all the political parties that participated in the election. It wasn't even very clear. They testified. What is in this bag is not even clear. Now, how did Akere Dolu, the Supreme Court judge, how did she know what every other person never knew? Can somebody answer that? You can't answer. You cannot answer it. They, you called, I, I, I thought in, in a court of law that, that you judge based on what you have in front of you. Isn't it? That is, that is what you judge on. What is in front of you? Isn't it? So how come that all the witnesses that testified that the Supreme Court should be taking their testimony into consideration when reaching a, when reaching a decision? How come that everybody who testified said this bag here with 366, uh, 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 with the result of 366 polling station or polling um, um, units is not legible enough? We cannot read what is written there because it was written by APC. This is a packaged material because Hopu Zodema was in 2419. If you don't know, they believe in packaging. Packaging is that is that trick. So you don't know that Hopu Zodema was in Lagos as a 419. He was stealing, he was duping people. We call it Yahoo Yahoo. He wa that was his job. That was his job. Ask him what his job is. Who puts on him? He was duping people. Doing uh, 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 what she was, come and buy. And they, they are stuck in trade is packaging. When they package it, they give it to you. They tell you, oh no, they place $20 on top of, um, uh, for, you know, label. We call it label in those days. Those, those insertions you put in bread. They put 20 and they, they wrap it. He says money doubling. If you give us money, we, we double your money. They have not doubled their own, but they, they can double yours. It's called packaging. That was exactly what they did in Imo State. They packaged fake result sheets. Wrote it in a hurry. They didn't know what they were writing. Nobody can read it. That is why the instead of the Supreme Court justice to say, open that bag, let's see what's in it. They couldn't do that. Because they've bribed all of them. They have all been bribed. Now, don't worry. <laughs> Tomorrow you hear them. In uh, they, they will, all those um, uh, big, big grammar, legal words. You will see it tomorrow. They will not address a very simple issue. How, my dear um, Supreme Court Lord, how did you get from 366 polling units to 388? They'll never answer it. Never. Oh, no, no. Oh, there are additional materials. Maybe they'll come bring another police uh, woman. <clears throat> To bring the extra thing. I said, oh, we left it. We forgot it in the car. It's there. It's not, you know, that type of lie that uh, Shomole and Abakiari would tell. Unbelievable. 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 All their witnesses admitted that the result sheet did not contain any entry to show the number of ballot papers issued to the respective polling units. Simple things. You, you claim all these polling units, they voted for, for who opposed them. But on the result sheet, there is no... Okay, how many ballot papers did INEX send there? 
the answer is zero. Nobody knows. But uh, the Supreme Court, Tanko Mohammed knows. Tanko, how did you know? Were you in Imo State? Were you a returning officer in Imo State? I'm not talking about the problems of the law. I'm the nitty gritty. The facts and figures on the table. Facts and figures on the table. Facts and figures. <laughs> Most of the sheets that the policeman was carrying, the 366, did not show any names nor signatures of presenting officers and the date of issuance. None. All forgery. All 419. Forgery. Package. Ibu al Haji. Package. Arranged very neat. With an next stamp. Fake. Everything fake. They are presenting fake documents before a Supreme Court of a country. And to make matters worse, those fake documents were not even verified. They were not even verified. Fake. They were not verified. Fake. Fake documents. Fake. Complete and utter fake. The deputy police commissioner who brought the results had no idea about the contents of the results. He knew nothing about it. He came on a subpoena. They subpoenaed him and he came. Subpoena means forcing you to come and testify before a court of law. And they asked him. He said, me, I'm an ordinary policeman. I was asked to bring this bag here. I don't know what is happening. There he has collected his own money. Even when the lawyers for head your hand, and the PDP objected and said, this cannot be admissible. If the man you called as a witness is saying, I don't know what is in the bag, don't admit it. The court went ahead and admitted it. And I'm asking the Supreme Court, on what basis are you admitting something that I make knew nothing about? I'm asking her, her name is Akredodu. I'm asking her, on what grounds did you admit this as evidence in a court of law? On what grounds I'm asking? The person that brought the bag said, I don't know what is in the bag. And Nick looked at the, he said, they don't know what is there. No result sheet, nothing, nothing is there, it's all forgery. You still admitted it in a Supreme Court. Supreme Court. That is how corrupt they are. But we are here to expose them. Do I need to say more? During cross-examination, the DCP said he was not the forger of the, of the result sheets in the bag and knew nothing about the contents and the scores. He knew nothing. I don't know. They asked him to bring it, so he came back. He said, I don't know what is in the bag. I do you know this bag? I said, no, we don't know. Then whose bag is this? It's from Oshomole, from APC. They have bribed Tanko Mohammed. They are... They, they, they cleverly packaged it so that uh, PDP won't complain. We have given you by answer. Now leave Imo for us. Imo is for Ruga. Imo is for Fulanization. Imo is for Islamization. Imo is for Caliquate conquest of Biafra land. They, they want to plant or they have already planted their flag in Imo State. That it was why they gave away by Elsa and said, of course, the man for the certificate anyway, the deputy governor is legitimate. They should be kicked out. But they gave it to them. But they could have said, no, the certificate was not forged. After all, when they were presenting or when they presented the dead Buhar certificate to justify the, the, the candidature of, um, or the candidacy of, um, of uh, Jubril, the Supreme Court knew he was forged. When they asked them, but this man has no certificate, they said, no, he cannot be a general without having a certificate. And then we asked them, have you seen this? It's, it's, it's called point of law. Have you seen the certificate? Supreme Court said no. But how come you're dismissing the case? Because you cannot be a general without going to secondary school. <laughs> Can you see how they reason? You see, you see black people. Do you see how we reason? Do you see how we reason? Do you see how black people reason for goodness sake? You brought somebody to court saying, this person has no certificate. They forged the one that they have. And the court said, oh, he can Okay, why didn't they apply the same rule in the case of the deputy governor of, um, of Bayelsa State? To say he cannot be where he is today without uh, those qualifications. But you see, Supreme Court, 
they rule in your favor. If they, they're afraid of you, because Buratai and uh, Abaki Ali or Monguno will send their, their hitmen, they will investigate the account, they will find some money there, and they will jail them or remove them. They use the organ as an example. Frightened all of them. But tomorrow, some of you will still call them my, my Leonard, my George, he's a, he's a, a supreme son of, of judges. Rubbish. They have nothing upstairs. I'm telling you, don't be intimidated by the weak. They have nothing. I'm telling you, before God and man, they have nothing upstairs. Absolutely nothing upstairs. They plagiarize judgments from all over the world and they write and they give to you and they pay some journalists in, in European newspapers to be writing rubbish. And that's what they write. Is it, well, there's hunger everywhere now. You pay me, why won't I write? Watch channels tomorrow morning. It is the apex court. You cannot change the ruling. It's the apex court. Watch what will happen tomorrow. But we are telling them, you see this very case. You know, our God is miraculous. He gave us in state this case to make our passage very smooth into the hearts and mind of the civilized world. I don't have to preach very much. If I go, I just drop it and say, read it, I'll come back tomorrow. In a court of law, Supreme Court judges are basing their ruling, or should I say judgment, on the contents of a bag that nobody knows what is inside, on the contents of a bag that has been forged, on the contents of a bag that the electoral umpire have said, we know nothing about this, in a Supreme Court. <laughs> what else? What, uh, what other case do I need to make? If uh, you, know, say, oh, but you called Nigeria a zoo, I gave it to you to read. When I come back the next day, you give me tea and coffee and biscuit and everything. I say, Nigeria is not even a zoo, it's worse than a zoo. On, based on, on the Supreme Court judgment, you watch and see. Let them ignore us at their peril. They will, of course, uh, my happiness is they know what we can do. So there's no need to even complain. They know what we can do. It is not about a case of dumping documents in court. The same bag of evidence you have ruled against many times. They bring it now because uh, uh, the Sultan have spoken. We need Imo State. We need Imo State. Oh, we need it. Chikina. And the hope of must be there. They asked him, do you promise to betray your people? He said, of course, I'll betray them. Hey, for, for, for only one million, they, be, they betray an entire nation, the class of Imo State. They will betray, betray everybody now. Oh, what, what, what is new? Is that not their stock in trade? Or oh, Haneze? And your governors, is that what they have been doing? Betraying all of you? And I've been looking at people, I've been, I've been laughing at them. We want the uh, IG of police to help us to organize security. We want the police to do community policing. I, I, I keep wondering. Starting from August of this year, we are patenting a DNA kit that will be sent down to our land. We want to know those who were actually fathered before, during, and after the war by Fulani soldiers. Because there are, are plenty, I'm telling you. The way we reason is shocking. Absolutely, it's a shock, I'm telling you, to the system. It is not a case of dumping documents. People contacted him with state police command. And they asked the commi commissioner, police commissioner said, I have no record of what the documents are carrying about in Abuja. Police commissioner in Imo State, a full animal, said, I have no idea what is in the bag they're carrying up and down in Abuja. Police doesn't know, and it doesn't know. How come it is only Supreme Court judges that know? How come? I, I ask them. They do not know. How can they know? Devilish people. Devilish people. They caught another. <coughs> oh, dear me, it's, it's unbelievable. <coughs> unbelievable. Excuse me. Unbelievable. The bags that are carrying in Abuja, the police don't have record of it. That's a bag of 30, 366 police. Police have no record of it. INEC <laughs> has no record. The number of declared, sorry, the number of votes declared by Supreme Court for hope is, or them, is far higher than the number of registered voters. Chineke Kuriyojo, can people actually reason? We are at this point. How, Chineke? Please, God, please, I beg you. People cannot be this stupid. Can, there can never be anywhere in the world where people can be so stupid that simple arithmetic one plus one, they don't know. How can you allocate a higher number of votes to Hopu Zodema more than the registered voters accredited to vote? 
how is that how is that even feasible? How is that possible? I ask. How is that possible? How? I ask. Okay. It's for those who said I want to believe in Nigeria. The Nigeria will. Oh, Basanjo, are you listening? You believe in Nigeria. Is this the type of Nigeria you believe in? In Nigeria, where a Supreme Court can allocate votes to people, phantom votes to people, votes that never existed. It is in black and white. Ainek, can you please give us your figures? How many people voted? Yes. Ainek supplied it. It is higher than the number of votes being allocated to Hope Uzodem. How can any sensible person ever, ever justify such a blatant injustice? How is that possible? The entire case leaves everyone in doubt. There is no Supreme Court in Nigeria. We have a Supreme Corruption. Supreme Corruption. At the heart of Fulani Ron Janjaweed government of Abakiari. People have been bamboozled, frightened, terrorized into stupor. Al Sudani is uh, prancing about as the face, whereas uh, Abakiari is the main hand <laughs> rocking the boat. People are so petrified and stupid. Cowards shouldn't be journalists. I say it all the time. Journalists is made for the, for the bold. That is why the only pe when people talk about um, the zoo and journalists, the only person I remember is, is the Legiwa. The only person I remember and I have respect for is the Legiwa. Where are the rest? Where are they? they I don't want to die like the Legiwa. I don't want to die like him. Because the Legiwa ex exposed corruption with facts and figures, and Babangida sent a parcel bomb and killed him. And uh, instead of people to be morally outraged, <laughs> some people are saying, I'm, I'm a Babangida boy. They started boasting among themselves. As young as I was then, that was when I lost hope in a black man, to be honest with you. Telegua was a very good man. A very good man. And my hero, for that matter. A very decent, good man. A crusader. Came back from abroad and was exposing injustice. And I killed him. <laughs> Ray Ekutu took over news watch. What happened? After, I think after about a year or two of... Uh, you know, um, on the cover page, they will always ask who killed the Legiwa. He stopped. They paid him off and he stopped. And, uh, oh, black people. They never stay on anything for long. They never remain resolute. Never. You need to remain resolute, consistent, resolute, resolute, resolute. That thing you identified from the beginning that you're fighting for, you fight for it. Don't allow yourself to distract it. Ray who allowed himself to be distracted. He stopped campaigning for who killed the Legio. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. Very sad indeed. The same Supreme Court that ruled in the case of Al-Haji Abu Bakr, uh, 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 Atik Abu Bakr. Remember Atik Abu Bakr when he went to court? The same Supreme Court said that they will not relate to dumping of documents. That is not permissible in any trial. The same Supreme Court allowed documents from Imo to be dumped on them. The same Supreme Court. One rule for one person, one rule for another. Go and look at the court records of um, Atiku Abubakar against um, um, Abakiyari, Jibril, al Sudani. Is there. The same court opened their mouth and said, we will not allow any dumping of documents here. Your case is dismissed. The same court is now allowing dumping of documents from Imo State. Because the Caliphate is in charge. The Janjawood is in charge. The Alemajiris have taken over the whole place. And you're telling me you believe in one Nigeria. There are mad people everywhere. You believe in one Nigeria, my friend. Insane human beings. Insane people who can no longer reason properly. They dumped documents on the court. Nobody knows what is happening. They called 28 relevant witnesses. But the same Supreme Court earlier held that one must bring witnesses from all polling units. They rule one thing in one case, they rule another thing in another. In other cases, they say, if you're going to rely on the results of this very polling unit, go and get me a witness from that polling unit. They did not do it. One rule for one case, a different rule for another. 
they we are required since since supreme court is relying on 388 polling units the results they should have brought 388 witnesses So if you did not bring 388 witnesses, how do you know what happened in all those polling units? I'm asking the Supreme Court, Tanko Mohammed. You see, you can, they could have gotten away with this nonsense before, when there was no IPOB. You know, you can get away with nonsense. But now there's an IPOB. You cannot get away with this. You cannot get away with this rubbish. It is impossible. All these facts and figures are being collected uh, for the Western, for people that actually went to school <laughs> to go through and see that indeed uh, uh, some parts of Africa is full of baboons and monkeys. They can't reason very well. You see, when you go abroad and you're discriminated against, or uh, people treat you lower than a human being, you shouldn't complain. You brought it upon yourself. Look at what is happening in a Supreme Court. They said no document dumping, but people are dumping documents on them. They said you must bring one witness from all the contested polling units. In this case, 388. They did not bring any. The policeman that brought the bag said, I don't know what's in the bag. INEC, do you know? INEC doesn't know. Then how come the bag made it all the way to the Supreme Court? Open the bag in court. They said we won't open it. Open the bag. Let's see what's in the bag. You won't open it. Can, can, can you imagine? This is a court of law. Can you imagine police stopping you and asking to open the bag, your bag and you say no? What will happen to you? In a court of law, the, you're relying on this bag containing 300, not even 366 putting you, yes? Then open it, let us see. The court said no. Won't open it. Court of law. Court of law. Court of law. I don't know who made black people on Islam. Who created black people actually in Africa? Some, so, so, some, of, some of them, um, uh, some of them, I don't know why they love gravitating towards evil, what is bad. That's the difference between white and black people. The, the, a majority of black people tend to support evil. Why, why is that? Why? I ask. People that brought the results said we don't know what is inside it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And they say they are learned people. They have only one solution. One simple solution that will make them save their ugly faces. You just say that because um, as, um, as um, Humble and Zadibe will say, in Nigeria, one plus one is eleven. Not two. One plus one equals eleven in the mind of a black man. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad. Very, very sad indeed. We must continue. The time now is approaching. It's 28 minutes past. Seven in the land. Is it, it is actually, isn't it? Yes. It's 28 minutes past the top of the hour, wherever you are. Past the top of the hour, wherever you are. We are live and we are direct to the whole world. This, I know it's a bit unusual. This is a morning program. Very, very unusual. Very, very unusual, we must say. Very, very unusual. And um, uh, as we begin to analyze the stupidity in the zoo, it gets more ridiculous every blessed day. Burata Stoff declares war on Niger Delta criminals. But he will never talk tough and declare war on Boko Haram and ISIS. Those who are slaughtering people, committing genocide across the Middle Belt. No, 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 no. They can't talk tough. A war against them is a war against the North. But on Niger Delta, oh, they are Niger Delta militants. And as I said to our people, the more you answer these stupid names, the more they isolate you and they kill you. They did it to attack Aburo. They must listen. They did it. The stupidity being exhibited by some people in Southern part of Biafra land, was exhibited by Adakabu. Cancer, we were the same thing. They killed them. It doesn't matter how much 
for how low you, you are to the caliphate. When, you, uh, when your you sell by date has expired, they kill you. What happened to Adaka Boro and to Kensero, who should have taught everybody in the coastal region of Biafra a lesson? The so called South South. That should have taught everybody a, a very bitter lesson. The more you keep running to them, the more they get. Look at um, um, uh, 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 um, Oka. Charles Oka. I was with him in, 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 in Kuja. He was working for APC. Informing on his own, on his fellow countrymen. They still jailed him for life. The same people uh, to hold Henry Oka. That is innocent. That did nothing. He's serving life imprisonment in a Sokoto prison. Charles Oka. From so called South South, Middle Belt, Niger Delta. These are all the rubbish, nonsense, nonsensical names. He thought that serving APC and the, the DSS would, would save him. No. He went down for it. Being a traitor never, ever, ever helps anybody. Never. Burata is talking tough, declares war. They have not declared war on their fellow killers and murderers in the north. No. On the Fulani men rampaging everywhere. No. On the killing of Christians. No. They have declared war on Niger Delta. Because they call you Niger Delta. If you have said we are all Biafrans, they will say, yeah, can they say they have declared war on Biafra? No, of course not. They know the headlines and minds all over the world. They give you a name, they isolate you, and they kill you. But if we say we are all Biafrans, there is no way they can carry out or conduct anything in that part of the world. That is simple. Pure coins that some people not understand and appreciate. It's common sense. And know where we are that I, the success of our of operation crocodile smile for an indication that the military was battle for the criminal elements in the region. you are battle ready in Biafra land but you're not battle ready in the north you're battle ready in uh, uh, those that call themselves niger delta are you listening they are battle ready in niger delta but not battle ready in some visa forest what does that tell you what does that tell you that your belief and faith in the so-called nonsensical one Nigeria. It will kill you. The same way he killed Adakabura. And unfortunately, cancer everywhere. They, they, they brought upon themselves. Once you reject Biafra, you saw, look at all of them. Nam Daziki, everybody that rejected Biafra, what became of them? I said everybody. Everybody that rejected Biafra, this union of the East, what became of them? Go and read your history, man. And you see what became of all of them. They were all failures, all of them, from top to bottom. Today, who is suffering? Who is suffering today? I ask you. They are the ones suffering it. Not all. Today, we are. Can you believe that? Army general, we are battle ready. But when it came to the north, they asked him. He said, no, we don't have enough soldiers. We need to recruit an additional 4.4 million policemen. But in the Niger, we are battle ready. In the Niger Delta. And the people say uh, they're from Niger Delta. They are, they are, uh, we are one Nigeria. The Burata you are serving for all those pigs, mouthing rubbish, easy, mouthing rubbish. The Burata, the caliphate you are serving, said they're battle ready to kill you. Can you hear that? They have burnt down five villages in Bayelsa. They are battle ready. And the funniest thing is that even now, when the villagers are crying, no, you know, people won't write it. And of course they won't. But you never learn anything, do you? You don't learn anything. But I'm very glad that today we are casting live and direct. And as I said, Facebook is doing all it can. People join to listen to our program and they cut them off. This is what the Yorubas are doing. And I'm asking you, Robert, please warn your sons and your daughters working for Facebook to leave us alone, or else we will curse them. 
Remember when I told you that the Fulanese were coming into Yoruba land? And some of you didn't believe me. I told you they were coming. And they came. I want the Yorubas that uh, manage Facebook in the zoo called Nigeria to leave IPOD alone. Leave my page alone. You are inviting destruction upon your heads. I've been telling you you don't want to listen until it happens. We must continue. The killers are at it again. As is the caliphate. Go on said it have been worse. Do you see I, despite the genocide they committed, they are still boasting. Some of them are still boasting. That the war could have been worse. The killing of their friends could have been worse. Go on. Do you know why he's saying this? Because Go on is free. Some of you wonder why I hate Ohanese so much. And those are the idiots that have gone before us. Do you know why I hate them so much? Because they could have held this buffoon to account, to go on, this mass murderer to account. They never did. Have you checked the list of, of bloodthirsty dictators in the world? Go to Google and just Google it. The worst genocidists, mass murderers in the world. Google it, you will see the name of Gowan there. But he's busy working by saying he's praying. He will come to a he will go, he will go to any he will go. And you say you have leaders. Your own people were massacred, over 5 million people were killed. The person that presided over their killing is moving about very freely. I want to have respect for you. We are at ICC with Burata and all the rest of them. Even posthumously with the dead Buhari. And they must be held accountable by this generation. Our fathers, they messed up big time. Big time! Look at go on moving about and bragging. In a civil war, we could have killed more people. Can you believe that? And somebody says, yeah, we are in uh, Pandef, we are in Ohaneze, we are, we are the leaders, uh, elder statesman. Mossad killed every body that had a hand in the death of Jews in Germany. And when our time comes, the church shall it be for all those that killed their friends. But uh, there's no need to talk too much about that when the time comes. Look at the people you have, Ohaneze and Diaran and Bioshi, all these idiots. Look at them. Go on is moving about talking rubbish because they did nothing. Our lives do not matter to them. What matters to them is uh, uh, who will make my, my child a minister. How do I serve the, how do I kneel down before the caliphate so they can make me governor of any good state? And now you know why they feel so insecure with us. As the Buratai is getting ready to invade the so-called Niger Delta, which is a southern part of Biafra land, we are battle ready. I am asking Buratai this very morning, wherever he is, <laughs> the general that <laughs> never won, even, uh, if, even uh, against a ragtag army like Boko Haram, he cannot win. He's a general. You see, they call him that the, the general has come. This is he's a general. Mouth, general, just like the Supreme Court judges. They are judges by mouth. They, cannot, they don't know the law. As Burata is be saying, we are battle ready for Niger Delta because, of course, it's our oil that they're after. Uh, the oil and gas in Biafra land. That's all. Secure it so that the Alamajri Janjaweed can be eating large. Do you think Burata will be saying what he's saying without the support of the British? Is the British government supporting him? Kill everybody. We are here. We tell CNN not to report it. BBC will not report it. AFP will not report it. Writers will not report it. Nobody will report it. Kill all of them there. No, nothing will happen. We are Britain. We cover everywhere. But as he is planning to invade Niger Delta, as he claimed, we, I want to draw the attention of to Kaduna State in a place called a Gabi local government area where his fellow Janjaweed, Fulani, terrorists killed 51 people. You see, I said it a few days ago that the more you continue to believe in one Nigeria, the more you will die. You will, you will be slaughtered. Let me also remind you, those that think that uh, maybe bribing Boko Haram will, will somehow um, make your life easier, that Boko Haram will one day disappear, you are dreaming. Write it on a piece of paper. You are in cloud cuckoo land. You are insane. They will never 
ever stop. So zoo is gone. The zoo you see is gone, gone and gone forever. The Hauser Service of the Voice of America reported that newborn babies were not spared by the government. This is a report I'm reading to you from Alamajiri newspaper, online paper, called Premium Times. It's owned by the Fulanese. It's an Alamajiri paper. It's online newspaper. Babies were not spared in the massacre. In the same Nigeria that Obasanjo is praying for. The same Nigeria that the mass murder go on is praying for. And I'm, how can you pray that kids be killed? How is that possible? You know that sustaining one Nigeria will bring death, mayhem, destruction to ordinary citizens. Yet you're praying for it. BBC, uh, not BBC, Voice of America House of Service. Many residents fled the assailants and they set many homes on fire, which is what Nigeria Army does. Well, that's what we say, the terrorists. And they stole their foodstuffs as well. The council of Kere, Kera, Kerawa Ward, Diabu Kerawa, who confirmed the incident, told Daily Trust, who is a, another Almaty paper, that all 51 victims were buried around 4 p.m. on Sunday. They have been killed. Buratai will not go there to say we are ready. He said he's in the South South, South 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 Niger Delta. South South Niger Delta, whatever rubbish those, those, those names mean, I'm telling you. He is not in Kaduna. Burata is not in Kaduna. We are 51 people, including babies, we are slaughtered. And people are praying for one Nigeria. Praying for one Nigeria. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I don't believe what is happening. And uh, as the, this slaughter of children is going on, going on, what, uh, as I told you, you know, Channel Television works for They are busy praying for a better Nigeria. Anytime, I say this thing to people all the time, anytime you see your life, you know, there is heat wave now going on. There is no electricity. People are roasting. Ask yourselves, rather than going to church and wasting your time, ask, ask God, what wrong have we done? Then God will reveal to you how stupid you have been. Collectively, maybe individually you may be brilliant, but collectively how daft you have been. People are dying in the north. 51 people slaughtered in broad daylight, including babies. The Nigerian army is planning to send troops to where there is no war going on, saying we are battle ready. And you're telling me that is a country? You're telling me these are human beings? Don't you know that Fulani can Fulani people, they, they are naturally not civilized by nature. They drink the blood. You know, before they don't need to eat meat, they drink the milk from cattle and they, they, they drink the blood. You don't know that? These are the savages, the vandals that are now flooding in. And Obasanjo, instead of rising up and saying that division is the best way, then we can get together later on. After all, Biafra will be a part of ECOWAS. People can go their separate ways and, and decide to come back later on if they want to. But the only way to stop the killings of people going their separate ways, that is the only way you can. It's called containment. You contain it. But what has happened, former president, that all hands must be on deck to address security challenges in Ghana. Why is he saying that? Because everybody only wants a piece of the cake. They think that without oil and gas, they will not leave. Without oil and gas, they cannot survive. People are so naturally lazy. That is the only thing that sustains or drives their, their one Nigerian mentality. Access to crude oil and gas. That's all. As people are dying, Obasanjo say, all hands must be on deck. According to Channel TV, all hands must be on deck. In the East, there is no statesman of such gravitas anywhere. The Yorubas, they did a very good job. They used their media to market all their... Pentecostal pastors and all their, all their leaders, so that when they speak, people will listen to them. But in the East, there is absolutely nothing. You pay, you pay the media to report you, or you kneel down and beg to become the governor of uh, any state. Very sad indeed, or to become the vice president. No honor, no dignity. Speaking during a costly visit by the special envoy to the Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Justin Welby in Abiyokuta in Ogun State Capital, Basanjo maintained that all Nigerians must walk and pray for unity amongst all. He was addressing somebody that created him. 
Nobody must touch anything created by the white man because you're black. You are, you are a baboon. You know nothing. And I bet you if Nigeria was created by somebody from maybe Ghana or from maybe Dahomey, by now we would have closed it, uh, would have changed the name a long time ago because it was created by a white man. That is the reason why. That is the reason why it must stay. He's addressing, and, and the white man will be laughing at, looking at the passenger and laughing at him. Nigeria must be one. And I'm asking a passenger, can you go to Europe and create a country? Can you go to Britain and create, you, you, you're an African man. Can you go to Europe and create a country in Europe? They will slaughter you there and there. But here you are supporting and encouraging what was built by a white man, the age mate of your father. So before the white man came, who was your father? Where did he come from? People without pride and honor. We Africans, we mess up ourselves. After messing up ourselves, we start to blame white man for it. We, we consciously mess up ourselves. After messing up ourselves, we start blaming white man. White man did this. They are discriminating. They are racist. Why wouldn't they be when you behave like a, like a fool? You are sitting in front of the white man that colonized you, that made your life a misery, debased you. You're saying we will do everything we can to make that thing that you built, this prison you built, to sustain it. And he's looking at you there. Like the fool that you are. Very sad, isn't it? Very, very sad. And when I say our people are not reasonable, uh, they think uh, people are dying. I know you can do to pray. All, hand, all hands must be on deck to do what? I'm asking about Basanjo. All hands, you say all hands must be on deck to salvage Nigeria. Salvage it how? In what way? By Islamization? Then maybe that's how we can do it. That's what Shekau wants and, and all the rest of the Janjaweed who have fired all the terror groups. They want everybody to be Islamized, for Nigeria to be a, an Islamic country. Then uh, that's how you can put all your hands on deck. That's how you can put all your hands on, on deck and pray for a better Nigeria. And as they are praying for their better Nigeria, you see how foolish Nigerians are. Very daft indeed. And of course, the whole world is listening to Radio Biafra. They listen. In from Radio Biafra informs the lectures that they give to their students in Argentina. Some of you don't know this, but we do. They understand more about Africa and how a black man reasons by listening to Radio Biafra. More than any other, because here we speak the truth. We are not here to sugarcoat anything. If we are wrong, we tell you. If we are right, we also tell you. But we are wrong in wishing for one Nigeria. Those of you wishing for you are wrong. You are bringing death and misery. Go to Benue State and ask them. Benue is under siege. We have forgotten about that. All the massacre in Benue, in Benue, you have all forgotten about it. Haven't you? You have all forgotten. There is no respite in Benue State. Only yesterday, the governor, Governor Autumn of Benue started raising alarm over the mass influx of armed headsmen into the state, lamenting we are under siege of armed headsmen and we are helpless. Governor of the state saying we are helpless and Burata is busy planning to invade Southern Biafra. A Joland to be precise. Burata is planning to invade a Joland. We are rats. Benue is under siege by armed criminals, armed panic gangs, terrorizing and killing. And you're saying, God bless our army. God bless Nigerian army. Why don't they go to Benue and fight their fellow terrorists? They are planning to invade the Joland. They have burnt five villages in the Joland. Five! Some idiots still say they are from uh, this year, uh, Biafra thing. Uh, we are from Niger Delta. Oh Stupidity is, is indeed a disease. A disease. This thing started from when, you know, people have very short memory. They don't reason very well. I keep saying, every day I come on air, I tell you. If you like, you listen. If you like, you don't. When they slaughter you or your family, you will listen to Radio Biafra by force. You will listen by force because we've been telling you, but you don't want to listen. 
All of you have forgotten when the governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai, that they are touting as the future president of Nigeria. That is how foolish people are. Indeed, very hopeless. Once you give them money, black people, once they can feed and satisfy the needs of their stomach, they start talking gibberish. Remember El Rufai? Do you remember him? The governor of um, Kaduna State. All of you have forgotten how this man openly boasted and paid killers to go and be killing people in Kaduna State. You have all forgotten. This is the people that is uh, pushing Tinubu. So that they can have him in office and kill him, kill, kill off the idiot and take over. You have forgotten that this El Rufai stated on the 6th of December 2016 when addressing reporters in his office that most of the armed men that came from Niger, Cameroon, Chad, Mali, and Senegal. And he has located all of them and he has paid them compensation. A governor of a state paying killers the same way they're trying to export them abroad in the name of amnesty. And some of you are saying he's a, he's a, he's a statesman, he's a leader. The good Lord has you upon your soul. Southern Kaduna People's Union then accused Governor Rufai of paying full and enhancement to kill people of the region. This is not IPOB. The people are alleged that the governor empowered foreign headsmen with funds to perpetrate killings in southern parts of the state calling for the interrogation of three other others, they said were among these um, 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 payments by Governor El Rufai and southern com Cardinal communities that have suffered the greatest social disruption, economic deprivation, and sustained insecurity of their lifetime. People from southern Cardinal, they told Biafra was their problem. Ibo man is your problem. You see how clever they are. They go to you. The evil man is your problem. As they are doing to some idiots now in a land. Evil man is your problem. Not that I'm... But they are killing you. They are slaughtering you every blessed day. But your stupidity will not allow you to see clearly. Look at Southern Kaduna. Mostly Hausa Christian communities. They are under siege. Look at Benue. They told evil man is your problem. They are under siege. Everywhere you... Even Yoruba that they conscripted into their, into their, into their conspiracy. Their grand plan against Biafra. Papa Soranti did not, did not kill his daughter. Uh, Fulani headsman, not in Yoruba, land, in Yoruba forest. When will people reason? Because here, on this platform, we reason. This is Radio Biafra. I thank all of you for listening this very morning. It's a very brief program. To remind those who are going to high court, those with their horse wig, what is expected, what the whole world is waiting to hear, is the date. Or uh, ask INEC to fix the date. Let the whole world observe and see who will win. But they don't want to go through that route. But we shall compel them to. We are not asking for anything. We are not asking for war or confrontation or anything. No. Or civil disobedience. No. We are asking you to announce the date of fresh elections in Imo State. Let the people choose who will govern them, not the caliphate. Not Habakiari, not Oshomole, who is just an Iran boy for the caliphate. Others have suffered. He, when his, his, his turn comes, of course, he will suffer it as well. I thank all of you for listening and for reasoning with us this very morning. From me, from here, have a blessed day, and it is good morning.